Welcome to my first YouTube tutorial. Um, this is not actually a tutorial. This is going to be an intro to a tutorial series that I, I've been wanting to put together. Um, it kind of bridges the gap between Xcode and AppleScript or Unix shell scripts. If you've got uh, some shell scripting experience and you want to um, wrap a GUI around it or um, have a GUI for your users or yourself, um, but mainly AppleScript. Um, I had tons of AppleScripts I'd written over the years, so many variables that um, needed to be changed or tweaked, and there was no UI. There was no user, um, the way for the user without dozens of pop-up dialogues, um, answering questions, um, making choices about this value or that value or uh, path locations, those kind of things. Um, so I wanted to put together a tutorial, just a video series of, um, you know, how to set some of these basic things up. And this video that's playing in the background now uh, was just a, just a quick screen recording that I did um, of a little project that I threw together that um, allows a, a value to be uh, counted down using uh, some Apple script repeat loop and, and updates some static text fields and the numeric values and also update um, a progress indicator which took me for ever to figure out because there is no resource online that anybody's willing to give away on how to, to update the progress indicator indicators um, in Xcode using um, Apple script so um, I finally figured it out big big milestone um, so um, I wanted to pass that information on uh, and maybe teach some others who've had trouble finding those resources. Um, the books that I've bought have been virtually useless. Um, I'm not sure what the what uh, some of these authors are thinking in terms of what their audience is. Um, but in the print industry, um, where we still use a lot of Apple Script, we still use a lot of automation. We still have a lot of one-off uh, utilities that, that are very beneficial, very time-saving, um, cost-effective means of um, even monitoring, moving files, deleting files, um, depending on what your need is. Um, this is a way that you can take those Apple scripts and put them into a um, application GUI that gives your users or end users more control um, over the app, over the settings, um, gives them feedback for the Apple script that normally runs. There's really little feedback of what's going on during that process, um, regardless of how brief or extensive it might be. Um, the GUI just makes it a little more user friendly um, and easier to modify um, after the fact, if your end users have ideas that they want to incorporate into the project, um, into the utility that you've written for them, they, um, it's a lot easier to go back and, and make those modifications in Xcode than it is to go back and rewrite um, a lot of AppleScript code. Um, and it seems more stable. Um, I will say that. Uh, it seems a lot more stable. Um, but there's a lot to cover. There's no way that I could do it in one video, so I'm going to try to break it down um, and try to cover some of the key pieces. We'll start with basic um, project creation, naming, uh, just working in the in the Xcode environment. Um, what some of the um, the tools are, um, and then we'll just we'll get into the user interface objects like buttons and, and text fields and um, labels and uh, those kind of things and then how to tie those back into uh, the, the Xcode um, 
Apple Script routines, um, some of which can be ported straight in from your Apple Script. Some of them are going to have to be uh, modified completely depending on whether you use a lot of handlers. Um, if you use a lot of handlers, you have to break those out. That's not a big deal. It just takes a little thought, a little time. Um, I had some that had um, multiple nested repeat loops um, based on you know very complex directory structures and um, that routine those those handlers were nested and that something that has to be re the logic has to be reapplied in Xcode but it actually makes it easier so um, you know there's a lot going on in this crazy little video me just clicking around I'm not really explaining what's going on or what I'm clicking on or what I'm trying to ex um, show you, but um, it it um, we will cover that. I will cover that in these in these upcoming tutorials. I just haven't figured out exactly where I want to start, but um, I think it'll be valuable. Um, based on the limited uh, tutorials and documentation that I've been able to found, find online. Apple doesn't really seem to, to bridge that gap uh, with, with um, the material they have online. There's just some broad assumptions there that you know you already have coding experience and maybe if you do um, you don't you don't really need this tutorial so I think this is for a, a small audience, um, target audience. If you're a Mac user and you don't know AppleScript, um, there are some AppleScript resources and maybe some of my tutorials I might be able to teach you some of that. Um, Using Script Editor or Script Debugger, which I have, and um, I can uh, I can teach you a little bit of AppleScript code, and then teach you how to incorporate that AppleScript code into Xcode to build. Uh, a simple, um, probably not for retail on the App Store. I'm not going to make it there with some of these projects, but they are small utilities. I've developed a few that are really cool, just handy little utilities. Um, one actually uses a couple of different apps. Um, it's kind of a bridge between Safari in an application that downloads um, MP3 audio from YouTube, um, and basically it's a uh, the 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 application for downloading the MP3 audio is, is a necessity uh, for my application to work. Uh, but it's a one button click. Uh, you can browse YouTube all day long. You know, look through all your favorite music and just click away on this little utility button and the music is autom automatically going to get uh, imported into your iTunes library. Um, I just deleted a bunch of in the video just showing how deleted a bunch of menus. Uh, a lot of the menus depending on what you're building, what you're coding for, you don't need a file edit do you? you don't need all those menus. Um, so it was just a you know, I was just kind of jumping through the interface, um, just clicking around, passing the time in preparation for this audio dub over um, to explain that this isn't impossible. It's a very simple process, and I think um, I think I can teach. Uh, I teach you how to build um, some really interesting and useful uh, utilities using Xcode. So um, I'm going to trim this now and post this and I will work on a live tutorial uh, as soon as I can get to it. Um, and we're going to just going to start with the uh, Xcode interface. If you don't have Xcode, you'll need to download it from the App Store. Uh, it's a pretty big download, but um, definitely worth it. Um, might want to search online for um, 
um, some, some Apple script resources. Um, I'll probably add some links into some of the tutorials to references that I have online going forward. Um, not sure that I'll upload any of the code that I have, but I may. Um, it's not like it's proprietary or um, I'm going to make any money off of it. So I, I just, you know, this is for educational purposes only. So for like minded uh, Mac users that uh, uh, want to make the experience a little bit better without having to spend a lot of money on utilities that uh, are overpriced. And you just need to solve one problem. You know, sometimes you just need to solve a simple problem. And this interface uh, process using Apple Script and, and some shell scripting if you're uh, familiar with shell scripting, uh, I think will be very helpful. So until next time, um, it's Kev. Thanks for joining.